Hi everybody, my name is Ron Katz, I'm with Aurora Generators and today I'm going to introduce you to our 20 kilowatt home standby generator you see here behind me. It is not just for homes, it can be used for many other applications, but it is our most popular generator for homes. Let's go have a quick look and help you become a little more familiarized with it. Take a look at this compact diesel generator. It is enclosed in a steel canopy enclosure that's powder coated for added corrosion resistance. There are two large removable panels on both sides. The muffler exhausts out through here and the radiator cap is just under this access cover plate. Using the two lever latches on this panel, you can easily open it up or lock it with a key to secure it. Let's have a look at a generator in the assembly process. We start with a Perkins diesel engine and connect it to an alternator or generator head as some call it by mating the flywheel to the alternator you see here. The assembly is then fitted with vibration isolators and mounted on a steel platform we call the base or the frame. There's a fuel tank built into it. This is a fuel cap and this is the fuel level sensor the fuel supply and fuel return line. There's also a battery tray here. All generator operation, monitoring and control are through this panel here. We have another video where we review this in greater detail. This key switch is your main on and off power to your control panel. This is the panel circuit breaker and this is the main circuit breaker for your generator. You can purchase the generator without an enclosure and it would look pretty much like this. The muffler and the battery are on the other side. This is where you fill the engine coolant when you first receive the generator. We add to all Aurora generators a coolant level sensor so you don't need to worry about checking it too often. The controller will also let you know if it needs attention. This cap is where you fill the engine oil. It's not on the top of an engine like you might expect. Every 500 hours, you'll need to replace the oil filter. To drain the oil, just turn this valve a quarter turn and empty it into a container or through a hose into a container if you wish. This is a dipstick. It shows how much oil is in the generator, just like on a car. Next to it is the oil pressure sensor. The controller monitors it. This cable is for the fuel stop solenoid to adjust the engine RPM, you can make small adjustments to the speed by adjusting this screw here. On the top of the fuel injection pump is a nameplate. This is where you'll find the engine serial number and the engine build number. You'll need this information if you ever wish to order parts. For the generator to keep itself cool, it draws air in through the alternator through the back and out to the side here. The fan then draws air through it and pushes it out forward, unlike a car where it's pushed from the outside in. As a starting aid in cold weather, this heavy relay is used to energize the glow plugs that are powered for about 8 seconds before the generator starts in cold weather. There are a few more sensors on the engine thermostat housing. One is a temperature switch and the other is a temperature sender. The air filter is inside this housing. It's easy to remove and replace. When the generator assembly has been completed, it is load tested for quality control. The next step is to build the canopy enclosure around it. some labeling, cleaning up, and another quality control check, and the generator is ready for packaging and to be shipped out to the customer. Most generators are delivered by transport truck. For residential properties or limited access, the generators are often transferred to a smaller truck for local delivery.